place. So the neck is here, where the portal vein is located. Right? This is very important. You are exposed. Yeah, you can take it. Yeah. You see? This portal vein starts here. It's, it's formed by the union of the splenic vein with the superior mesenteric vein. This is your inferior mesenteric vein. The inferior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein, while the superior mesenteric vein, when it unites with the splenic vein, it forms the, the portal vein. Okay, And this is the landmark. The part of the pancreas medial to it is the head. Okay, The part of pancreas lateral to it is the body. And this part is the neck of the pancreas. Okay. Similarly, anteriorly, you can see the site of entry of the superior mesenteric vein. Okay. And you can make out, you can see at the top the, the portal vein coming out and join these two parts like this. So, part of the pancreas medial is the head, part of the pancreas laterally is the body and the part behind my pencil in conformity with the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein this is the neck of the pancreas right so neck is narrower than the head and the body parts isn't it right and um, uh, you can see the splenic artery at the top there you can see the man pancreatic duct there for the man structure here posteriorly there is a process known as unsignate process of the pancreas okay now the unsignate process and this part of the head of the pancreas are embryologically developed from which part ventral pancreatic bud or dorsal have you done the development yes, of yes. pancreas and uh, development of git yes embryology of git have you done lecture on yes yeah? so we this can achieve, yeah? Unseen it process and this part of the head ventral. develops from ventral. ventral. It develops from ventral pancreatic bud and then ventral pancreatic bud goes backwards, rotates like this and unites with the remaining of the pancreas to completely form the head of the pancreas. Right? So these are the important things to be known. You can see the man pancreatic duct going here, opening at the major duodenal papilla. Okay. And you will find accessory pancreatic duct opening about 2 cm above this opening. This, this is the minor duodenal papilla. So you have got the opening of the main pancreatic duct and accessory pancreatic duct in the descending part or second part of the duodenum. And it brings the pancreatic juice right there. Okay. So note the, the parts of the of the of the pancreas head neck body and pancreatic duct axial pancreatic duct superior gastroduodenal artery inferior gastroduodenal artery and astomosin here as well as on the back okay. and superior mesenteric vein and artery portal vein and this is your hepatic artery there they will go through the lesser omentum into the liver so liver is located here these are going in the liver okay and uh, see this is the tail of the pancreas sitting in the ligament gastrosplenic uh, ligament there not gastrosplenic in or in the ligament so it, the tail touches with the hilum of the spleen there this is the celiac trunk celiac trunk this is, is here celiac trunk is it gets the uh, Celiac trunk gives splenic artery, gives hepatic artery, hepatic artery, and it gives uh, uh, right gastric and left gastric artery is not shown here. Okay. It's relation. Pardon? Uh, relation. Uh, of the of the pancreas. Yeah. Yeah, very simple. You, you, you are having attachment of the transverse mesocolon right there. Right? Yeah. So below this transverse mesocolon, attachment to the mesentrium transverse mesocolon, below this you are having inflammation.
supracolic compartment above you are having supracolic compartment so anterior relations of the pancreas will be coils of the small intestine below the attachment of the transmesocolon okay above the attachment of transmesocolon the anterior relation will be the stomach the greater curvature of the stomach the body of the stomach okay and you see anteriorly it is uh, having uh, so posteriorly it is having the the kidneys and the suprarenal glands at the two ends there and you are having the lesser sac okay, there and posteriorly you are having the troughs and bottoms of the splenic artery the splenic vein and posteriorly you are having the inferior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric vein which unite to form the portal vein okay now on the sides it's, it's related with the curve of the duodenum on the right side where the head fits with the uh, with the curve of the duodenum and laterally its tail is related to the spleen okay so these are the relations this upper part forms part of the stomach bed it is related entirely with the stomach its lower part is related with the coils of small intestine because this is the attachment of the mesentery of the transverse colon transverse mesocolon which is attached here thyroid thyroid ंग the rings of the which rings of the trachea second third fourth uh, second and third the second third they are related with the with the stomach and then the you see both the lobes they are projecting upwards and related with the thyroid cartilage on both the sides and these are sent in conformity with the superior border of or medial border of the lobe with the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage so you are having oblique line of the thyroid cartilage here oblique line of the thyroid cartilage here and the lobes of the thyroid gland are related with this sometimes you may find uh, accessory lobe of the thyroid which is there okay mm. yes okay. and it will go upwards there but usually there are two lobes and you see it's, it's just making a very deep contact with the trachea and there is a common Uh, fascia which covers the thyroid as well as trachea known as pre tracheal layer of the fascia so that the thyroid gland is completely it's completely plastered uh, on to the trachea that's why when we swallow something the the thyroid cartilage moves upwards bringing with it the attached pre tracheal fascia which is attached on the oblique lines so it's, it's just like uh, you take a paper and attach the oblique line tissue paper attach the oblique line and then paste it with gum so if the thyroid cartilage is lifted up thyroid gland will be lifted up so this will help in clinical diagnosis of any swelling which arises from the thyroid gland or any swelling which arises from other tissue like lymph node if it is arising from thyroid gland you place your hands on the swelling and ask the patient to swallow the swelling will oh, move up right if it's from lymph node or other tissue it will not move because it is away from the pre tracheal fascia yes. so this pre tracheal attachment is very important yes. Yes. and rest of the things are just simple three arteries to supply superior thyroid artery middle thyroid artery and inferior thyroid artery similarly names three vein superior thyroid vein middle thyroid vein and inferior thyroid vein Yes. Okay. So let's see. Deep, deeply, it is. Uh, this is is trachea. This is esophagus. This groove is important because it contains the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay. So in operations of the thyroid, the nerve which is located in the groove between esophagus and trachea, there, that nerve 
not shown in this diagram that can be damaged and since it supplies the muscles of larynx so it will produce uh, affection of the voice or hoarseness of the voice so in relations of the thorax the recurrent laryngeal nerves are very important because they are uh, winding around go upwards in the groove groove between the trachea anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly on either sides so these relations are very important attachment to the pretracheal fascia recurrent laryngeal nerves is vasculature so vasculation explain yeah we supply superior thyroid artery middle thyroid artery and inferior thyroid artery it's not a, it's not it's shown not here not shown here okay very good specific